as the founder of the North Korean state, he would pound the podium and he'd say, this is what's wrong with Christianity. It puts people to sleep. And what Koreans need is a religion that wakes them up. And that's what he gave to them. Welcome to Now Hear This, a podcast by Faith Comes by Hearing. Through partnership, Faith Comes by Hearing records and freely provides audio Bibles to the more than 50% of the world's population that cannot read or has no written language. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the conclusion of our interview with Pastor Eric Foley of Voice of the Martyrs Korea. We hope that the conclusion of this segment will encourage you to pray for our brothers and sisters in North Korea as they face unprecedented persecution while advancing the kingdom of Christ. What are some particular challenges that your ministry faces that perhaps our listeners might not think of right off the bat? Well, one of the best kept secrets about North Korea, unfortunately, is that people have the idea that North Korea is an atheistic country, Mm. but it's not. North Korea is in fact the most religious country on earth because its religion is called Juche or Kim Il-sungism. This is the worship of Kim Il-sung. Kim Il-sung grew up in a Christian family. In fact, his father had trained him to play the organ in a church. And he used to go to church every Sunday with his mom. And in fact, his mom would fall asleep in church and, and he would listen very carefully to the message and he would look at all of the things happening in the church. He asked his mom one day, he said, mother, why do you go to church if all you do is fall asleep? And she said, oh, the church is the only place I get any rest. And so he would tell that story uh, at, you know, as the founder of the North Korean state, he would pound the podium and he'd say, this is what's wrong with Christianity. It puts people to sleep. And what Koreans need is a religion that wakes them up. And that's what he gave to them. He took the Christian faith and he took out God from that faith and he replaced God with himself. And so that's why every week, 100% of North Koreans are, are required to gather together in what are called self-criticism meetings. Uh, but to us, we would look at it, point to it, and say, that's a church service. Uh, you have buildings, in fact, many of the buildings were formerly churches uh, before North Korea as a state was instituted. And um, uh, the difference is there's a, in, the, in the front, instead of a cross, you'd have a giant picture of Kim Il-sung. Someone would stand up and they would open the hymnal of praise to Kim Il-sung, which has 600 hymns of praise to Kim Il-sung. The South Korean Christian hymnal only has 550 songs of praise. So North Koreans like to point out that uh, they have more to praise about Kim Il-sung than we do about Jesus. Those songs are ones that most Christians would know. Uh, we were with a North Korean uh, who had defected from North Korea. He was an underground believer, but he had escaped when his mother was executed. And he was in the UK with us. And uh, the congregation, right before he got up to speak, uh, they, sung the, they sang the song, How Great Thou Art. And he panicked. Mm-hmm. He said, why are they singing that song? And we said, it's a Christian song. And he said, really? <laughs> he said, that's the song we sang at Kim Il-sung's funeral. Only we sang it to Kim Il-sung, How Great Thou Art. So after they sing from this hymnal of songs of praise, someone stands up and they read from the writings of Kim Il-sung. And many Christians would recognize these quotes from the Psalms, Proverbs, even um, there's something called the Ten Principles. Does that sound familiar, Ten Principles? And the uh, the, the first one is, you shall have no greater loyalty than the loyalty to Kim Il-sung. So after they read from these uh, writings, then someone preaches on them. And so... uh, That's why researchers who study religion call Juche the 19th largest religion in the world by total number of adherents, because there's about 20, 25 million North Korean people, all of whom are required to practice Juche. So when we try to evangelize North Korean people, they don't listen to us and say, wow, what you're saying is really blowing my mind. What they say is, why are you copying us? Because Juche is such an imitation Mm -hmm. of the Christian faith that the answer to the question, why does North Korea persecute Christians, is they have to kill Christians because only Christianity can expose Kim Il-sungism or Juche as a fraud. Because uh, Juche is such an obvious copy of the Christian faith that any Christian could explain that and point that out. So I think this is something that most people don't realize is a special challenge in North Korea. This is not evangelizing atheists. This isn't reaching communists. This is penetrating the most satanic deception that has been perpetrated on a population. North Korea is the only country in history that was intentionally founded as a distortion of the Christian faith. 
that creates such interesting challenges for evangelism that without the Spirit of God, it would be pointless. And so when the North Korean Christians approached us about doing an audio version of uh, the Bible, and, and so they, they, they designated me to talk to Faith Comes by Hearing about it, um, I knew the Holy Spirit was in that, and in the years that we've used this Faith Comes by Hearing audio tool, I could, I could tell you story after story about how the Holy Spirit has used it to penetrate people's hearts, uh, whose hearts have been hardened because since birth they have been brought up in this Juche ideology. You've already talked a little or a lot about the, the impact that's being made, but are there specific stories that you've, you've seen, people you've met, who have been impacted by the work that you're doing in getting God's Word to people in North Korea? Well, you know, it's happening even as we speak, because um, even now, uh, whatever the hour is, day or night, whether by radio broadcast, balloon launch, or the, the discipleship bases we operate, someone is using this tool, this Faith Comes by Hearing Audio, to be able to introduce the gospel to a North Korean for the first time. So I'll tell you, I think um, a story that may surprise people, the particular woman that I have in my mind, a woman we like to call Esther, she was sold into uh, sex slavery to her uh, you know, to her husband, and in order to try to get out of that situation and actually raise money for her family, who was really suffering and starving at the time, she made arrangements to sell 10 of her friends into sex slavery to 10 other men to be able to make money. Wow. Through the course of all of this happening, uh, we met her, we shared the gospel, we gave her a proclaimer device, she listened to it, she came to know Christ through that uh, the Holy Spirit using that audio recording, her first thought was, I need to share the gospel with these women that I sold into slavery. So she did, and so those, her immediate family, she went from being a sex trafficked woman to a woman in what is best described as a Christian marriage. And they then evangelized together the women that she had sex trafficked and their husbands. And those groups went on to evangelize others. So now more than a hundred different, we call them house churches, or Faith Comes by Hearing, we call them listening groups, are gathering together. Sometimes the men can't even speak the language of their wives, but they're listening together and they're sharing the gospel. And so their marriage has been transformed. The husband used to beat the wife, used to go out and spend all the money on drinking. And now these marriages have been transformed. And so uh, they, the way they think about a church is, it is, it is a, a relationship where they're transformed from sex slaves into husband and wife before God. I think only the Holy Spirit could even conceive of such an idea. Hmm. And so I think that uh, that's, a, that's a great example of how if we try to take a, a missionary approach and say we're going to take our Western values or concepts of missionary work, we're going to bring them into the setting, we're going to be a lot less effective than North Koreans who are hearing from the Holy Spirit asking us for the tools and putting them, in the wor- putting them to work the way the Holy Spirit directs. Compare the fruit of that. Look at that, the, the suicides happening uh, from the, the North Korean women who are escaping to South Korea. Compare that to now more than 100 house churches from a single sex-trafficked woman with this audio tool. It's just amazing how Faith Comes by Hearing is being used by God in partnership with the North Korean underground church. Incredible tales of how God is working and using people to glorify himself. How can our listeners pray for Voice of the Martyrs Korea and the work that you're doing? Well, I think the, uh, the, the prayer that I always ask people uh, to pray for us is that we would continue to learn from our North Korean brothers and sisters. You know, we've had 36 members of our Voice of the Martyrs Korea family that have been martyred. Uh, we continue to care for their family members. We consider it an honor to have had so many of our our team members who lay down their lives. We want to hear from God, not according to our human way of thinking, but according to God's way of thinking. We don't um, uh, ever send people into difficult situations carelessly. But in places like North Korea, the gospel only advances at the cost of people willingly laying down their lives. So pray that we'll listen to North Korean Christians because they're the ones who can keep us safe in these difficult circumstances. They're the ones who know when it's time to lay down their lives and pray that we'll be good supporters for them. You know, the, um, I think one of the things that's it's, it's interesting when, when, you, when you think about the Apostle John and how he was the last apostle left alive and 
um, in many ways, it's harder to be the person who's left behind than the person who goes to the Lord. The Apostle Paul talked about that when he said, you know, I compare whether it's harder to, to be with the Lord or here with you. And he said, I think it's actually harder to be here with you, but I think that's what I need to do. And I always feel that way when I look at the brothers and sisters who have been martyred in our ministry. Um, some days the challenge is, uh, I think, Lord, when, when is the time that you will take us uh, to you? Um, because it can be challenging in these kind of situations. But we count it a privilege, and I think our prayer would be to people uh, is just to say, pray for our team to have the wisdom and discernment to know uh, when the right time is for the right witness. Help us to be humble to listen to North Korean believers who can tell us how to witness in these situations. Pray for the martyrs and their family members who are left behind. We have, uh, uh, we have had 36 martyrs, and our 37th martyr, Deacon Chang, is uh, uh, the man who may be our 37th martyr, is in prison in North Korea. We always pray for his miraculous release, but even on a day-to-day -day basis, we pray that uh, the Lord uses him as, as a witness to his captors. So pray specifically for Deacon Chang. Uh, we really do value the prayers of the Faith Comes by Hearing family for our ministry. Pastor Foley, it has been truly an honor to have you here on the show, and we're about out of time. But I wanted to give you the opportunity to leave any closing mm. thoughts you might have with, with our listeners about what we've talked about and what's uh, God is doing in, in North Korea? Well, these days there's a lot of talk with North Korea about uh, peace process and nuclear negotiations with the U.S. and all of those things are important. But you know, the day-to-day -day life of North Korean people hasn't changed at all during this process. You know, what's happened that you see about in the news really is about um, the interaction between nations. And so life for ordinary North Korean citizens is still very bleak. And so we can't uh, focus only on those issues uh, about nuclear agreements and so forth. As Christians, we need to be redoubling our prayers for the North Korean people. And uh, especially then, God has placed 100,000 Christians in North Korea. That's the total number of Christians in that country. 30,000 of them are in concentration camps. Let's pray that their light shines in this nation of about 25 million people that God continues to grow that church and we continue to be faithful to partner with them and pray for them. Pastor Foley, again, I thank you so much for, for being here today and talking about uh, work that a lot of people aren't aware of. Uh, so we appreciate you and uh, we ask that God blesses you and continues to bless the work that's being done in North Korea. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. God bless. Faith comes by hearing. On Now Hear This, we always highlight a language that has been recorded to promote appreciation for the huge variety of languages throughout the world. We want to connect you with the work being done among these people groups to reach them with the Word of God. Today's section of scripture is Hebrews 13.3, which reads in English, Remember those who are in prison, as though in prison with them, and those who are mistreated, since you also are in the body. Here it is spoken in the North Korean language. 감옥에 갇혀 있는 사람들이 있으면 여러분도 함께 갇혀 있는 심정으로 그들을 기억하시오. 학대 받는 사람들이 있으면 여러분도 같은 학대를 받는 심정으로 그들을 기억하시오. North Korean is spoken by over 23 million people. The North Korean church thrives despite being one of the most persecuted groups of Christians in history. Pray that other Christians around the world might be inspired by their faith. We pray that this podcast has encouraged you. If you have questions about today's show or how you can get involved with sharing God's word in a format and language that oral people can use, email us at podcast at faithcomesbyhearing.com or call us at 505-881-3321. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 